Good morning! How is everybody doing? It is a Friday, guys. It is the final trading day of the week. Guys, I need to let, let me know you're fired up. Hit me nice and early with a deck bar trades. Ow! Because I'm again ready to rock and roll for this day. I'm actually pretty excited about this day. I'm actually kind of all done with my day already, as I've already had a nice trade on this uh, morning. Um, it's been so much fun this whole entire week. I've gone five for five. I have not missed one trade this week. Every single trade I got into did turn into a winner. There we go. That's what I love to see over in chat. So, yeah, so every single trade so far this week turned into a winner. Um, and I was able to make some very nice profit this week. And that's one of the best things about November, right? About November. I've said this every single year. And if you guys are in chat every year, you guys know I say my favorite trading month is November. This is usually when uh, I see some of the most profitable plays, right? And if you guys are saying, well, Deck, if you guys weren't here this morning, what did I get in on? EYEG. EYEG, uh, EYEG, I made a profit of $217 with only 100 shares. I got in on this uh, it got in on this play on the morning spike. The morning spike that was right here when the stock started ripping and running. How did I get in on this? I was just awake, right? And there were about 100 and, uh, 120 other people that were awake with me in chat at 7 a.m. So again, I bought in on the stock at 7.03, right? And then got out of the stock, as you guys can see right here, at 7.05. I did post this over in Profits Chat as well, so you guys can go ahead and check that out. But I got in right around 7.60, 7.75, and 8.20. If you're saying, Deck, why did you get in at 7.60, 7.75, and 8.20? Really, again, all I did was put a limit order at 8.20 uh, because that's where the asking price was, and it just filled me up at 7.60, 7.75, and 8.20 on the way up as well. Because there was like a 75 cent spread to a dollar, right? Now, you'd say, well, Deck, why did you buy into a stock that had a dollar spread? Isn't that risky? Isn't it a little risky to buy into a stock with a dollar spread? Well, the thing was, guys, I didn't really mind that much. Because you know what? We saw KRTX come out meeting its endpoints. And KRTX went from $15 to $150. And we had MYOV come out with its endpoints. And MYOV went from $6 all the way up to $18. If we are three minutes into the market, we are three minutes into today, and I look and I see that EYEG right here has uh, has already gapped up from $4 all the way up to $6, I'm saying, oh boy, here we go again, and I'm just trying to get in as quickly as possible. That's all I was trying to do. So again, I started getting in, getting filled around $760, $775, $820. $8 the stock ran all the way up towards $11. So the stock ran all the way up towards $11 this morning. Uh, as the stock started getting a little bit weaker, I was like, hey, you know what? Let me just lock in my profit. $217 just like that. Ow! So again, I love waking up early. I love waking up early. And again, I live streamed this trade. I sent out this trade over text alerts. I also, again, even you know, put it over on my Twitter and every uh, uh, and stock tweets and Facebook. So no matter what social media you guys found me out, uh, look at 6.59 a.m. EYG, all eyes on this play, hits primary endpoints. So if you guys are saying, Deck, what was the press release right here? We hit primary endpoints, right? When we hit our primary endpoints, that's what we always want to be focusing on. That's one of the biggest words we can see, right? Endpoints. Key words to look for in a hot press release. Four-star words. Guys, I don't even need to talk about this anymore. I feel like you guys already know it. I feel like if I keep saying it, you're going to hunt me down, find me, and say, Deck, stop telling us about endpoints, <laughs> right? But how good are they, right? Every single time, you know, we see we had hit primary endpoints, we get beautiful spikes, beautiful rims, uh, rips, and beautiful runs. And that's why the stock is up at the number one top gainer this morning. It's currently up 89%, right? So EYG, this stock is uh, up 89% because of that press release. It's a low float stock with only about 1 million in float. And this stock does have potential to go on a nice spike, go on a nice rip, go on a nice run. If you guys are saying, Deck, you know, uh, why are you not going over the morning newsletter? There is no morning newsletter today. I apologize. I'll make sure, again, that's all set for you guys on Monday. What are some announcements, though? Some announcements that you guys have to be aware of. Number one is tonight. Again, tonight, guys, what are we going to be going over? I'm going to be sending another person off to Vegas. All right, so tonight, I'm sending another person off to Vegas. If you guys would like to enter, all you guys have to do is retweet that status right here. So if you guys want to enter, all you guys have to do is retweet that status. I am literally just going to drag this over. I'm going to close my eyes. I will, again, just look right over here and then just 
do one of these. Do, 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 All right, winner. <laughs> right? So, you know, that is that is what I'm going to be doing tonight. So everyone can, uh, so you can see that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be uh, giving someone away. Again, a, another free trip to Vegas. This week, we've been killing it, right? This week, it's been so hot. This week has been, you know, awesome, right? I mean, I've made so much money this week. You know, let's give away a free trip off to Vegas. So, you know, EYG is going to be absolutely great. Uh, or excuse me, uh, that's going to be absolutely awesome. Also, little side note, if you guys have, uh, if, I'm sure, again, you guys are aware of it. But if you guys aren't, on Monday... We are kicking off our options boot camp lesson, right? So on Monday, we are going to be going over our options boot camp lesson. Um, and that's going to be on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We're going to have a nice little three-day course going over options. Now, uh, Thursday, the stock market is closed. And then Friday is only a half day. Uh, I'll make sure I have the scanners up, but I'm actually going to be with family that day. So I'm not even sure if there's going to be commentary on Friday. The market closes around lunch hours anyway. And not too many people are going to be here on the Thanksgiving, um, you know, of, you know, a half day. So uh, just a little heads up about that. But that is, again, next week. So, again, we have a full day on Monday. We have a full day on Tuesday. I believe we have a full day on Wednesday. Stock market is closed next Thursday. And then it's only a half day on Friday. Then again, as we move over to December, again, December is where we get a lot of days off. December, we're going to be having Christmas Eve. We have Christmas Day. We have New Year's Eve. Uh, New Year's Eve is a half day. I, I, I think, actually, I'm not sure what they're doing because uh, New Year's is on Saturday and New Year's Eve is on Sunday. So I, I don't know if they're, we're even getting a day off or anything like that. I mean, I feel like we should. Let me check on that because that's a weird time. It's actually falling right on um you know a saturday and a sunday but i feel like they still have to give us something off so what are they doing 2000 2020 new year's day wednesday oh, that doesn't look like wednesday Let's see here oh january uh to do so we have january wednesday january 1st 2020 Wednesday, you know, that's not correct either. <laughs> that is on Saturday. So I'm not sure what's going on here with the New York Stock Exchange. Um, is New Year's Eve, a, a New Year's Day, a Wednesday? Am I going crazy here, guys? January 2020, calendar says the first, Saturday the first. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't, I, I'm not sure what the heck I'm looking at then. But yeah, hey, if that's a Wednesday, then it's a Wednesday. All right, so maybe my computer is just messing up. Maybe it's over here. Yeah, I, I know it's going to be, you know, closed regardless, but, you know, my 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 computer right here is saying January 1st. Oh, there we go. January 1st. I don't know what this just updated or something on me. You guys are thinking I'm taking crazy pills at, you know, Friday 9 a.m. right here. So, OK, finally got it correct. Thank you. All right. Yeah. New Year's is canceled. OK, so uh, we'll worry about that as that gets a little bit closer. OK. You know, we'll, uh, we'll uh, worry about that as it gets a little bit closer. The only thing that you guys have to know is, again, next week we're going into our options boot camp. And that's going to be on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Thursday is Thanksgiving. Friday is only going to be a half day. All right? Um, is there anything else? Well, we went over the Vegas trip. Click that link and, again, retweet it. Options uh, course starts on Monday. Uh, already made over $200. And that's bringing me five for five for the week and have not lost one trade so far. So that's another reason why I'm giving away this Vegas trip. Just again, it's been awesome. So why not keep you guys inspired, motivated, and getting after it. Um, now, what do, we need to, uh, what do we need to understand about Fridays? Well, as you guys know, Fridays are going to be a little bit more trickier. Fridays are usually quick days as well, right? You know, we don't usually see as much volume or hype on Fridays, and that's because we have lack of press releases. Look at like eight, uh, 7.30 today. 7.30, we only had three press releases come out. At 8 o'clock, we only had about 10 press releases come out. At 8.30, we only had about five press releases come out. And then at 9 o'clock, we only had about five to six press releases come out as well. So we are having lack of press releases. And usually the more press releases we have, the better chance we have to see a nice spike. The better chance we have to see a nice move. The better chance we have to get some nice momentum, right? So... Um, while looking at this play right here, uh, while looking at these plays, we definitely want to play something credible and we want to play something that is going to actually, you know, bring us value. That's going to be able to go on a nice spike and go on a nice rip. Let's go through our top gainers. Let's go through, you know, which stocks have the mob, which stocks have some hype towards it and, you know, which uh, ones have some of the best potential. Okay. So 
right now, um, let's go through them all to make sure that you guys are all set, ready to rock and roll. All right, number one, we already went through a little bit, but let's just do a little bit of a recap, okay? EYEG, this is most likely, hands down, going to be the play that you want to be watching today. Right now, it has support between 850 and 950, okay? So we are in a channel between 850 and 950. Notice, it comes up to 950, it falls back on down. It comes down to 850 and moves back up to 950. It comes down to 950, back down towards 850. Comes back up towards 950, you know, back down towards 850. Right now, it's in a channel. And it's really going to determine which way the stock breaks out at. If it breaks to that 950 mark, we could see a nice morning ahead as we run up towards $10 plus. If it cracks through 850, you may have to wait, you know, 30 minutes or so before it spikes. And hopefully, it can get that volume to get a nice big breakout and get a nice big rip. Right? So EYEG, the reason why the stock has the most volume is because it is the number one top gainer, 83%. So everyone who wakes up is going to be looking at this play. And then after that, guys, what do you want to be looking at? EYEG, the stock did come out with this great press release. Hits primary endpoints. You guys don't need any more, you know, description more than that. You guys know how big that is, right? Meeting primary endpoints, keywords, look for on hot press releases. I'll again, make sure I post this right here in chat so you guys have it. My number one job is to make sure you're prepared. My number one job is to make sure you're educated. And my number one job is to make sure you know why these stocks are spiking. I want to make sure you guys know all of this so you guys can go ahead and make money for yourselves, right? So great press release that was able to, you know, get a nice pop on that play. And that's why I hopped in on it. Okay, so we know that stock's going to have attention towards it at the bell. Is there anything else? Is there anything else that I'm 100% loving that could go on a nice big rip and run? And it's a little bit, you know, EYEG is in a different level. EYEG is, you know, this is where I want to be watching 100%. But we'll see if anything else can spike. Let's just work our way down this list. Number one, uh, VIVE. Do we need to get in on VIVE? VIVE actually started spiking at the start of today. It went from 220 all the way up towards around 588. Now, a lot of people are running around saying, why is this stock spiking? And if we look right here, VIVE, this stock doesn't have a press release. Last press release was on November 7th. This stock doesn't have a filing. The last filing was yesterday morning. And some of you guys are saying, oh, well, that's why it's spiking then. That's why the stock's spiking because it had a filing yesterday. It had a filing yesterday morning at 6 a.m. If this filing was that good, why wouldn't it have spiked yesterday morning when it actually came out? If, if, if the filing was good yesterday, it wouldn't do nothing all day yesterday and all of a sudden start spiking at the start of today. Right. So VIVE it had a filing yesterday, but that doesn't account for the fact on why it's spiking in pre-market because it came out at 6 a.m. yesterday. So it's you know, seven o'clock to nine o'clock yesterday it didn't move. And then nine o'clock all the way to four o'clock it didn't move. And then four o'clock to eight o'clock it didn't move. And then it goes from 7 a.m. and shoots on up today. No, this is more of a stock that has an extremely low float. People probably felt like they missed out on EYEG after this one went from four dollars all the way up to eleven dollars. And now again, VIVE started getting a little bit of mob, uh, mob attention, mob volume. Well, that was most likely just because of what? Uh, low float and people again missing out. It turned into basically a pump and dump. Do I like VIVE? Not really, to be honest, right? Not really. And why do I say that? Because I don't see any credibility on why the stock is running. How many pump and dumps have we seen? We've seen so many. VIVE, just another one to the list. VIVE, 240, up towards 580. Right back down to 260, right? You know, I don't really see a reason on why that play is even on up. We see that a lot. FUV, this was a good one again uh, two days ago. FUV, 230, up towards $4, right back down to 230. We are in a very hot market. And you know what? Stocks that have low floats are going to get pumped just because traders are saying, hey, you know what? This one uh, is a low float, so it could have a little bit of potential behind it. So, you know, VIVE, is it profitable? Yes. But just know if you don't have any news, if you don't have a filing, if you don't have any reason, the moment you see a red candle, just get out of that play. Because there is going to be, again, a times that you can make money on this. VIVE went from 250 to 596 almost $6. If you were on that ride, it doesn't matter. Again, you made money. But the thing is, once you start seeing it come back on down, it's going to drop on off because there's no, nothing there to hold it up. So I'm not the biggest fan of VIVE, but hey, maybe it could just run on a little bit of momentum, right? 
Um, ASLN, ASLN, anything going on with this play? 27 million in float. Is there any reason on ASLN? ASLN, no filing this morning. What about any news? Did come out with news talking about a publication of preclinical data uh, in its journal. Not really that big of a press release. That's why it's not really getting any volume. Also, 27 million in float. ASTC, lower float at 3 million. Again, a little a gap up, but you could see uh, um, you know volumes a little bit weaker. Do I want to say keep it on watch? Yes, but it's not going to be a priority. It did come out with a small press release right here talking about uh, sells uh, Tracer 1000 explosives to a shipping company. Um, again, not really that amazing, but at the same time, slight gap up, low float. It would still be something I would just keep on the back burner, maybe if it could start getting hot a little bit. Any break of $2, you may be able to see a little bit of volume. Okay. Uh, TOPS, I know you guys always look at this one. This one's a shipper, and guess what, guys? Shippers have been very, very mean, right? Shippers have just been taking people's money, right? As I always say, shippers are like, you know, your ex-boyfriend, your ex-girlfriend, right? You know, there's a little part in your heart that just, you know, wants them back. A little part in your heart that wants to go play them and be like, hey, you know what? We've had some good times in the past. Maybe, again, we can make it happen again, right? And then you go ahead and you hop in on TOPS, GLBS, ESEA, and then you realize why they broke your heart. It's like, what the heck? <laughs> you know, why would you do that to me? You told me you loved me, right? So, you know, that's what we have a lot of times, you know, on these shipper plays. You know, TOPS, ESEA, GLBS, every single time, you know, it's like, you know, I want to play these stocks, right? But every single time, what do they do? They just break your heart, right? They usually spike once a year, maybe twice a year, shipper plays. And when they do spike, they go on massive rips and runs. But we haven't seen them spike all year, right? And the majority of people who hop in on a shipper play are going to lose. Right. So don't get fall. You know, don't don't, you know, fall. Don't fall for a lot of these shippers, guys. Right. Because, you know, nine out of ten times, they're only going to break your heart. So I know when you look at it, you got to stop, you know, kind of getting in that trance of their good looks and low float. And those previous spikes and that volume that it has. <laughs> Hi, TOPS. <laughs> Hi, GOPS. How you doing? <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay, no, no, no. Don't do it. Don't fall for it. <laughs> okay, so again, don't fall for that. You know, you guys don't want to be getting involved with those plays. Okay, so, you know, we are going to be staying away from those shippers. All right, so we do not want to get in on those. Um, so out of all these plays that we're kind of looking at right here, right, you know, everything that we're looking at right here, we're going to really stick with EYEG. Right, EYEG is going to be the number one play that we want to focus on. It's going to be the number one play we want to look. Again, going through here, we have primary endpoints, EYEG. VIVE, no news, no reason, nothing I'm seeing there. Again, that stock had a press release yesterday, uh, but nothing that's you know leading towards it right now. This is just a low float that tries to get a little bit of momentum. Right, ASLN, this stock did have a small press release this morning, ASLN, but it is 27 million in float. This was just talking about a little publication of data. OOMA, again, this is uh, 19 million in float, very choppy volume on this play. Uh, this doesn't even have any news today. So again, stay away from that one. ASTC had a decent little press release over on ASTC. It is having a small gap up. I would say this one would be a back burner play. I would say keep it on watch, but it wouldn't be a main priority. And then other than that, we just kind of go to the shipper, which we're not falling for that anymore. And uh, we'll see what's going to be taken on over, right? So it really comes down in my eyes, EYEG is number one. VIVE may just turn into another pump and dump move. So maybe keep it on watch. And then ASTC would be number three. So it'd be EYEG number one, VIVE number two, ASTC would be number three, okay? What, uh, something that we cannot forget, though, is our previous spikes, right? Let me type these out right here. What are our previous, you know, uh, supernovas, our previous spikes, our previous rips, our previous runs? Well, we have KRTX, right? We're going to have MYOV. We're going to have WAFU. WAFU. We are going to have CGIX. Uh, you know, what else am I missing? I feel like I'm missing one right here. I'm going to get it real quick. I'm just going to bring up our yesterday's morning newsletter. Because that's how, that's how we rock. I know I'm missing one. It's bugging me. 
Here it is. A-R-E-V. That's what I was thinking of. All right. So here is our previous supernovas. Now, all our previous supernovas definitely could go on some nice rips. Our previous top gainers. All of these could go on a nice uh nice um uh go on a nice climb. So, you know, definitely it's something that you guys want to be looking at. You know, if we don't see any sort of hype, we do want to be able to look at our previous top gainers. Okay. Now, I know the majority of you guys are going to be focused on EYEG at the bell, right? That's probably where everyone's going to be focused on. This is the mob play. This is where the most volume's at. This is where the hype's at. As we talked about, guys, Fridays are usually our pretty quick day. You know, it's not going to be very long on a Friday. Usually, again, we trade until there's momentum um, or until momentum dies on off. And then once everything dies on off, we go out and start our weekends up. Usually on Fridays, after traders lock in their money, it's usually, hey, I'll see you guys on Monday, right? That's usually kind of the Friday mentality. Monday through Thursday, people stick around because, you know, you have possible swing trades. You have possible things breaking out in power hour. You have things maybe popping off, you know, maybe throughout the day. A lot of times, what's the mentality? Hey, I made some money. See you guys on Monday, right? Now, I always like to, again, make sure that I, I'm here to help you guys out. But, yeah, you know, Fridays are a little bit of a quicker day. Um, you know, I already made my profit today. Usually, I don't even trade on Fridays. So, if you're saying, Deck, are you going to be hopping in at the start of the day or anything? EYEG, I am personally not going to. Just a little heads up. I already made $217, which I've gone over before. So, uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with my day. I'm pretty happy with my week. You know, being five for five this week, I had about fifteen hundred dollars last week, almost about two thousand dollars this week, and uh, just again, you know, grinding on up. So you know, just keeping it going. Week before, I believe was um, about twelve hundred dollars. So I'm just you know making some nice consistent you know profits right here. EYEG, we're going to be looking for this stock to hold that eight fifty mark and a break through nine fifty. So at the start of the day, what could you do? You could put a limit order, maybe back down near support, or you can look to enter for a quick little pop. You really just want to go with momentum on a Friday, okay? So you want to go with momentum on a Friday. Try to get in as quickly as you can, or excuse me, not as quickly as you can, in the most consistent way that you can on which way momentum's going. Give it a second. If you see EYG just dropping off, sit away from it for a moment. Maybe look for a low dip buy, and then, you know, see if it could pop back on up. You know, it's not a play that you probably want to wait on super long. I don't see any sort of, you know, uptrend or downtrend. Again, I would really just play this channel. This channel is the best thing that we have currently, which is the 850 support, the 950 resistance. Again, possible entries it would be a dip buy at 950 or an entry at the start of the day up towards around uh, up towards 950. I don't really want you guys buying at 950, right? Again, every single play that I did this week was what? Either A, a dip buy or B, um was what i did this morning was i was awake and i saw the press release come out right so every single play th this week has been what i haven't chased i don't i don't think i've chased the play in like two weeks i haven't chased the play in like maybe two to three weeks i've just been doing tons of dip buys or if i'm awake when i see the press release that's when it comes out i know again a lot of you guys wrap up your uh wrap up in the morning i traded yesterday i traded yesterday on wafu and i was able to make 433 dollars but I didn't trade the stock until 1 o'clock. I traded it at 1.25 and sold it at 1.40 if you guys weren't here. Because that was over lunch hours, right? So, um, you know, we have, uh, we have um, a very nice move right here uh, from 1.25 up to 1.40. If you guys are saying, you know, when was that? W-A-F-U. And we go back to this, like, uh, five-minute time frame. That was this move right here. See this, like, spike right here? That's what I traded. So, again, I'm waiting. Mally, you do got a point on me there. Okay, that was a fun trade that just worked out extremely well. <laughs> so, yeah, for KRTX, uh, yeah, I did buy again when the stock was all the way up at around 136. So you do got me there. But that was only 60 shares. And again, I still was able to make $230 on that one. So that was still a fun trade. But yes, you do got a great point. <laughs> okay, so um, let's switch over to our scanners of the day. All right, market opens on up in about five seconds. EYEG, let's hold our channel. That's the number one thing, guys. Again, watch for a possible dip buy back down towards around 850 and then a possible move back up towards around $9. That's what we're looking for. If EYEG does start getting the mob right at the start of the day, it may just try to run up towards 950. So it's trying to pick up a little bit of momentum. Right now, here's a little bit of a pullback. Let's see if 850 can hold. Just came down towards around 852 so far. 
We need 850 to hold. If you had a little bit of a dip buy at around 855 or something like that, good job with that entry. Because so far, 850 is still holding. Now it's starting to pick up back up towards around this $9 mark. We're looking for a nice bid. So again, boom, just like that, 850 right on through $9. Perfect job. And again, this could just honestly be market order in, market order out. And there, just like that, you have your 60 cents, you're done for the day. So, I mean, that's kind of how quick sometimes these plays can be. VIVE is on the bottom level too. And you guys can definitely be checking that one out on vive that was the pump and dump in pre-market right now eyeg just came back down to 851 right now 850 is still holding as our support line we just came back down to 851 back up towards 885 another dip by opportunity again i don't want you guys buying up near 925 950 i only want you guys doing dip buys right because those dip buys are a lot safer you know, two different opportunities so far with limit orders down towards around 850. Now, I will say if we keep touching that 850 mark, you know, you probably don't want to get in on it anymore because it already bounced off of it twice. If we go back down again, we may start seeing a sell off. Now we actually do want to start building some higher lows and start getting up towards around, you know, 890, $9 plus. We don't want this again, you know, going back down towards 850 most likely again because that's where it could possibly crack. So if you have a limit order at 850 right now, take it off. Because again, you know, you already had two little opportunities. If it comes back down to 850 again, that's where it could just possibly crack on through. Right now, VIVE is trying to get a little bit of a, a little bit of a pop as well. That's on the bottom level too. But the thing about VIVE, what you need to understand, that stock doesn't have any sort of news. That's running purely on momentum, and you guys could see that perfectly clear on again, um, you know, pre-market. This was a pump and dump in pre-market. Right now, traders are just trying to get something going on it again. EYG has a lot more credibility as that one's trying to hold on up. So again, just want to make sure you guys are, you know, completely, um, completely knowing again where you guys want to be focused at. EYG starting to get a little bit more hype right here. Now again, just got all the way up towards around that 940, 950. We're still inside this channel. We are still inside the EYG channel right here. Good job so far. Good job so far. Now, again, 950 is where you guys definitely want to lock in something. Anything above 925, start locking in some gains, honestly, because that is where we are going to be in the upper half of the channel where things are getting a little bit tougher. And the thing is, you know, scale your way out. It's Friday. I want every single person here leaving with profit. I want every single person here making money. But I understand these stocks, you know, move pretty quickly. So right here, everything's above 925. This is where, again, you want to start scaling some profits out because people are going to sell as you get up towards that red line, which is the 950 resistance. And we don't know if we're going to break through or not on these Fridays. So we got to be smart. We can't be greedy, right? And just like that, we're back down towards 880, 870, right? You know, 860 right now, 850. So again, we're right back down and there's a little bit of a crack here. So we need to lock in our profits when we have them. Again, I don't make, the, make up these things. I'm not trying to limit your profits. I'm trying to help you guys understand where, again, people are going to sell at, right? You got to understand the, the majority of traders and what they're thinking. Right now, again, we are trying to hold 850, but it's getting a little bit tough right here, right? Trying to hold 850, but it's getting a little bit tough. As I said, also, if you come back down to 850 again, we already tested it twice. Again, the dip buy already happened once. The dip buy already happened twice. Coming back to 850 again, people are going to say, hey, if we come back to 850, that shows weakness. What we want to do is keep building higher lows. We came up right to the top. Everyone sold, and that's why it dropped on down. So if you're saying, why did we just see a red candle there? Everyone locked in their profits as we came up to resistance. Past chart history pattern shows that you know last time we came up to resistance, Right, Last time we came up to resistance, everyone sold there. And the time before that, last time we came up to resistance, everyone sold right here. So what do you think everyone's going to do as the stock comes right here? Hey, I want to make my money. I'm going to lock in my profits. And everyone, again, dumps it off once again. Right. So every single time it comes up to this area, people, again, lock in profits. People notice that because they look at the chart and they say, okay, I don't want to lose my profits. If this dumps on off, I'm going to lock it in. Everyone locks it in, it drops. So just like that. So again, that's why, again, just trying to walk you guys through these. Now, I know I have to talk pretty fast because the stocks move, you know, constantly. But I just want to, again, help you any way I possibly can. Right now, EYG, stay away from it as of now. Um, you will probably re-break. Re-break of 850 could be a possible entry. Um, you also have support all the way back on down. I see probably main support back down towards around this like 7.30ish mark. You know, another support line would be all the way back down towards around this like 7.30ish mark. 
And that's, you know, that would be another support line way down here. But we'll see if we can re-break back above 850. Little Sino, W-A-F-U. Sino, W-A-F-U. Previous top gainer of yesterday. Starting to get a little bit of momentum. This stock was a credible breakout yesterday. It was a 1 million in float stock, WAFU, which came out with a press release stating they had an agreement. They had a partnership agreement. This was a previous spike. Sometimes when, again, we don't have our stocks hold on up on the day, people run back to previous top gainers as they know they can spike. So WAFU, 1 million in float, was a credible play yesterday. Did go on a very nice spike from 150 all the way up towards around $6. At the end of the day, it did give back a lot of its gains. But again, if EYG can't hold its gains, people and the mob may move back over as they're going to a play that they know that can spike very well. All right, so again, six minutes in so far. As I said, I want to see everyone finishing this uh, this week off on the green side. So, uh, you know, we already saw some mega profits over in Profits Chat. $124 for King Trade, Scooter Pie, $105, Mpower, $120, KVITS, $40, AB, $1,700, Bulls, $250, KVITS, $147, Jay Cabano, $295. Make sure you guys keep throwing those profits over there. Again, awesome, awesome work. Monster Trader, 111. Taylor Trader, $600 today. Right now, we can take a look over on CEI. CEI, again, I like CEI for the possibility of when. I think CEI could possibly go on a nice spike. Um, uh, this, uh, anytime after December 5th, I believe it is. December 4th. I believe that Aramico, uh, the world's most profitable company, it makes over like a billion dollars a year. Um, they are an oil company. They're actually releasing their IPO uh, in early December. Now, anything that has to do with energy, anything that has to do with oil, um, anything along those lines, we could see a very nice spike on those plays coming on up in the near future. So again, if with a brand new, the world's most profitable oil stock, uh, coming out with an IPO, we may see a lot of little sympathy plays with penny stocks. And that would kind of fall right in the same time frame. Usually near the end of November, early December is when we start seeing what? We start seeing a lot of those like trendy plays. Remember, two, uh, two years or three years ago was low float Chinese plays. Two years ago, it was Bitcoin. Last year, it was cannabis stocks. It'd be cool if all of a sudden like oil stocks start ripping this year as we, the world's biggest IPO comes out um, on, the, on the world's most profitable company. It would kind of make sense, right? Who remembers that? Three years ago, all it was was uh, we had China talks, and it was just low float China plays, but they were a lot better China talks, and every single Chinese stock went crazy. Every single Chinese stock went crazy. And then last year, or two years ago, crypto. Remember when Bitcoin was going crazy, guys? Remember when every single person was like, oh my gosh, Bitcoin is amazing, right? <laughs> so everyone loved Bitcoin, and then all those crypto plays you know, spiked. Anything that had to do with Bitcoin, blockchain, whatever, went on massive runs. Stocks were going $2 to $20. Then last year, what was the hot thing, right? Cannabis, right? Cannabis was going crazy. These stocks were getting so high. Ha <laughs> ha, funny. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we saw a whole bunch of joint ventures. Oh, there I go again. Yeah, a lot of profit, a lot of green. Deck, stop, I'm going to hurt you. So again, a lot of big time profits and a lot of big time rips right there. Then this year, hopefully we could see a little bit of oil, right? Oil plays, and that's from the world's most profitable company could be coming on up. So um, that's where we could see a lot of big time pops. And I'm just trying to you know, see what's going to be coming on uh, up today. Because right now, EYG is starting to get a little bit of ripping and running. I know, guys, I'm fired up today. <laughs> I'm fired up today. I'm excited. I want to see you know, if we're going to be able to get any sort of nice big ripping. You know, any sort of uh, nice big popping on off. Because right now, again, we have... We have EYEG, and then we have yesterday's uh, WA, WAFU play. Now let's see, WAFU, EIVE, <laughs> yep, again, happy you're catching my dad jokes. That's what you get here. You get 10 out of 10 stock trading education, 10 out of 10 credibility and transparency, and you get 7 out of 10 with humor. Everything you want. Right now, EYG trying to hold that around the 850 mark. EYG trying to hold right around that 850 mark. 
Oh yeah, we're also again. Thank you, finance. We're supposed to see DMPI uh, um, uh, phase two results. So uh, finance whiz twelve hit me up and said, "Are we supposed to see DMPI?" Supposedly, supposedly we're supposed to be seeing phase two trial results on Friday, November twenty second. So if they they haven't come out yet, they could possibly come out in after hours. If they don't come out in after hours, let's make sure we watch on Monday morning. But yeah, they were definitely supposed to come out for sure. EYG guys working its way back on up. EYG working its way back on up. Back above 850. So 850 break. And now we're in, back inside our channel. We are back inside our channel. 850 break. If you guys are in on these plays right now, what are you looking for next? Again, you're looking for 950 as our top resistance. People are going to do the same thing. As we move above 925, people are going to start locking in again. So look at this. We're back above 925. Now, again, people start locking on in. So EYEG, notice again that that red resistance is still holding tough. Red resistance is still holding tough. Bids at 928, people start locking on in. Every single time. Every time you see bids above 925, you can honestly just do a small market order out. You'll get filled at 925, 928. Like right now, here it goes. Back up towards 926 are the bids. Now that back down towards 917. Look at every single time, every time we come up to these highs, you know, people just are locking in. And look at this. Now we're starting to get our drop back on down. Same thing. Let's add another one. Let's add another one. We are getting some HEPA, uh, HEPA also, but let's add another one right here, guys. And th that's the thing. People say, how do you predict stocks? Stocks honestly just do the same thing over and over again. And when they don't do the same thing, that's usually where you have your breakout. So if you want to think about it like that, HEPA starting to get a little bit of volume. How's AREV today? I just want to check that one out. AREV, not too much. Okay, so HEPA, this is also a, a nice little ripper um, uh, yesterday in pre-market. Yesterday in pre-market, that went on a nice big spike and a nice big rip. But again, a, a different way to kind of think about things. I'll put EYG on the bottom level too right now. So I'll put, uh, or excuse me, HEPA. HEPA is on the bottom level too. But if you want to think about it, you know, people say, oh, how can you predict the stock market? How can you predict stocks? Honestly, stocks are just, you know, uh, stocks will just do the same thing over and over and over again until it doesn't. And now it's like, obviously, Deck, I get that. But when it doesn't is when it usually gets its strongest moves, right? You know, it's basically when you change it up. When you change it up, that's where you get the strongest move. That's where you kind of get the most excitement, right? But EYEG runs up towards uh, 950, people locking their gains. The break of 950 is where excitement comes in and it could run all the way up towards around nine, you know, uh, 980, 990, possibly $10. All right. Imagine you, imagine you are a stock. What do you do? You could be in the same routine every day. I'm kind of in the same routine every single day. And what's that? Wake up at seven, do live commentary from usually nine to 12. Then again, lunch hours, two fifteen to four. After that, I usually get something to eat. I usually hit the gym, come back, you know, uh, be on my computer for a bit and then go to bed. Right, I kind of do that every single day, Monday through Friday. Now, again, when does the excitement come? When does the you know the switch up come? Well, maybe I go on a vacation. Maybe I take a weekend and go somewhere. Maybe I you know I take a day off, something along those lines. That's you know exciting because again, it's kind of a switch up from my routine. This is, but if someone said, hey, what is Deck going to do tomorrow? Right, he would. They would say, oh, he's going to wake up and he's going to go on Tradecaster.com and he's going to live stream and he's going to talk. And again, how can that person predict that? How did, can that, um, that person predict that Sean Deckmar is going to be going on Tradecaster and live streaming and live commentating? Oh, it's because of what he does every single day. Think about this right here. What has happened nearly every single time it comes up to 950? It runs on up. People sell it on down. It's not that, you know, not that hard to figure out. But the moment it does break 950, that's when, again, a lot of excitement would move on through. Right? So, again, let's keep our eyes peeled on this for that possible break. Bengal, no, I have a girlfriend. I just never see her. <laughs> so ASLN. ASLN got a little bit of a move right here. That's nice. Got Holton 943. Okay. Little sign out. Let's make sure we're keeping EYEG. So again, got a nice little hold. Let's see. ASLN. Any reason behind this? ASLN. November 22nd. Okay. So we got a little something something. ASLN, November 22nd at 1.30. Yep, that was this morning. That was the publication of preclinical data. All right, so ASLN right here got a nice little break. I'm going to put ASLN on the top, EYEGs on the bottom. What do you guys think would be the target? What do you guys think would be the target on ASLN? 
Pretty nice and simple, pretty blunt, pretty easy. Don't overthink it. What would be the main target traders are trying to push this up to on ASLN? Yeah, right here, guys. Right here. 50-day moving average. 50-day moving average, 149, 150. Right? So if you're saying 149, 150, 50-day moving average, right here. So again, that's where, again, traders are going to most likely try to lock in. That's most likely where people are going to try to push that profit up to. That's going to be the starting point right here. And again, you can also see right at 150 is where it bounced at. Bounced that. You can also see a nice little bounce right here. Bounce right here before it you know, started spiking on up. So 150 is going to give it a little bit of trouble. All right? If this was a five-minute hold, uh, it got halted exactly on 9.43 on the dot. So in exactly a minute 30 is when ASLN is going to get unhalted. Yep, again, ASLN halted right now. It'll get unhalted in, uh, in about one minute from now. About a minute 30 from now. Thank you for the shout out, Daryl Polo. Shout out to Deckmar Trades team, one of the best chat rooms hands down, four for four this week. Quick little $111 shout out to you, buddy. All right, so we are getting unholted here. 948. It's going to be in about 20 seconds. And again, EYEG, guys. EYEG is still fighting. EYEG is still fighting. We'll see if we're going to be able to break through that 950 mark still. But it really, again, we're going to keep our eyes on ASLN. ASLN does have a small press release talking about publication of data. No, that's not data results. I know you're like, oh, data is that big? It's a publication of data, right? It's not data. It's not brand new data results. Regardless, it's still moving. It's getting hype. It's starting to get activity. Main target traders are trying to get this up to is 150. One dollar will be a support line. One dollar will be a support line. It's supposed to get unhalted in two seconds here. ASLN, all eyes on the level two right here. I'll even drag this over for a moment. Ooh, are we going 10 minute hold? Are we going 10 minute hold? Okay. Looks like we're going 10 minute hold. Looks like we got another five minutes here. So it looks like we have another five minutes possibly over on ASLN. ASLN, again, if you always want to know the float, you can just honestly click ASLN right in chat. Go right here to statistics, scroll down, and you can see float 26 million. And you say, deck 26 million, is that large? I mean, the stock was at 58 cents. So 26 million isn't, again, that big, to be completely honest. And again, I always say when a stock is only 55 cents, when a stock's only 55 cents, why does the float not matter as much? Well, it still matters, but it's just it can be a little bit bigger because since it's so small, people can gobble up more shares. Again, the float's the shares offered to the public. When a stock's eight dollars, you may only be able to get 500 shares to a thousand. When a stock's 55 cents to a dollar, you may be able to get you know 8,000 shares, right? It's kind of so again, you know, the shares get gobbled up a lot quicker. There you go, LK. Some of you guys looking towards that play, a little bit bigger, but it's a nice little, nice little mid-cap crowd right here. Rapid, Monjer, Maxwell, Mr. Wendell, Iggy. Right now, guys, EYG back near support. We'll sign out EYG back near support. If interested, you still have. That's enough arrows. Um, if interested you still have this trying to hold on up on a little bit of a higher low pattern. So you still have this trying to hold up as a higher low pattern over on this play over on EYEG. That's trying to hold on up with some higher lows. Again, good job over on LK, guys. 
Now, this should be getting unholted ASLN in about two minutes, two and a half minutes ASLN. You know, usually we're usually we're right on five minute holds. You know, usually we stay right on five minute holds. You know, yesterday we had a thirty minute hold, then a ten minute hold, then a twenty minute hold. Michael, guys, making me blush. Thank you. Best chat room and mentor out there. Five for six on the last six trades. Singles add up. One hundred and twenty four bucks today. There you go. E Y E G. That's all you need. You know, one hundred and twenty four bucks. You know, on your Friday morning. Hey, that's awesome. So there you go. Awesome job, guys. All right, here we go. We should be getting unholted two minutes on this play. I just want to get ready for this. As you guys already know, again, I already traded on the day. I already made 211 bucks, five for five this week. So uh, I'm pretty solid. But if again, if you guys are interested on trading, again, you're looking for ASLN to run up towards around that 149-ish mark. All right, ASLN, if it's a 10-minute hold, it's getting unholded at 9.53. That's 19 seconds. 19 seconds on ASLN. And again, you're really looking for this target, which is this blue line, 149. 149, 150 area. That's like what you would want to get out of it. UIG still holding? Okay, it's open. It is 10 minute hold. Let's see the bids. Let's see if it keeps on moving up. There's 145. Make it hold it again. 150. 151. 13K order. Make it hold it again. Oh, it's going to get halted. Look at the bid stacking. Bid stacking frozen level two. Okay. So ASLN putting in a little bit of the business right here. ASLN putting a little bit of the business here right through. It's going to gap up over the 50-day moving average. So look at that. Gapping up right to that 50-day moving average right here. Um, or it's going to probably up towards around 158, it looks like right now. So it looks like it's going to be opening up towards around 158. ASLN currently have 243%, 27000000 million in float. And again, it's, it basically kind of filters out to a low float play. And that's just because of how small it started. Um, little sign note. Let's look into this you know, press release a little bit more. Um, let's see what we have here. Uh, ASLN announces publication of preclinical data in its journal. That's not really the best press release, to be completely honest. It says, today announced that preclinical data characterizing ASLAN003 has potential treatment for leukemia. Boo. I hate this word potential, right? You know, I'm not booing treatment of leukemia, obviously. I'm not an evil person. I'm saying, again, you know, boo for the word potential, right? And why, you know, potential? Potential guys, you that's 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 the oldest trick in the book. The oldest trick in the book is to say the word you know potential in front of anything, and then you can put out any press release. If I was a company, I could type, I could write anything I want. I could say, hey, you know, I potentially almost have the cure for cancer. I potentially, you know, am going to be able to solve every single disease in the world, and you know, have a cure. Uh, our company is potentially going to be able to you know do this, and it's like oh, they're not lying. They're allowed to put that out. They're allowed to put that out. And why is that? Because it's they're not they're not lying about it. You know, if they said we have it and they don't have and they don't actually have it, well, that's where they get in trouble. But potential means that they could be able to do it in the future. Right? 
So you could honestly say that and you're not called a liar, right? I potentially could be able to learn, you know, what my dog is saying to me half the time he's going, rawr, 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 rawr. <laughs> again, I don't know, but maybe uh, potentially I can learn, right? Potentially I can, you know, build a, a, a rocket ship out of, you know, straws and fly it to the moon. I'm not lying. Potentially I could, right? So I'm not a huge fan of the word potential, right? But at the same time, what I am a huge fan of is that this stock is moving on up and going on a nice rip and run. So again, the press release isn't my favorite, right? And that's just kind of what I'm stressing, but I'm not saying ASLN's a bad play. Obviously, ASLN has a ton of volume. Obviously, ASLN has a ton of attention. Obviously, the stock is a nice moneymaker. The only thing I would say is when momentum does die off, that's most likely when it's going to start coming back down pretty rapidly. So you're good to trade it. You're good to hop in on this play if you haven't, of course, because it's, it definitely has a lot of volume. But the thing is, we're up 243% right now. The moment that this stock does start turning on down, we could start seeing a little bit of a sell-off. It kind of reminds me a little bit of what? It reminds me a little bit of like FUV on the fact that FUV went on a nice spike, right? FUV went on a nice spike from $2 all the way up to $4, but then came crashing, out, uh, crashing down. It reminds me a little bit of VIVE, where VIVE went from 240 all the way up to 597 and then start crashing on down. Profitable, yes, but if you're late and you're at the top, you are going to get hit, right? So ASLN, profitable, yes, but if you're late and at the top, that's where you're going to get hit, right? Exactly. All right, exactly. Great examples, guys. Things that would never happen. Mr. Wendell, the Jets could potentially win the Super Bowl. A perfect example. You know, they're not lying. They could. They won't. But, they, you know, a great example right there. Things that are impossible. <laughs> yeah right it's, it's it's just any team i like you could put the word potential in front of the knicks the rangers the mets the jets Great girl. See you later, buddy. Awesome job. All right. So we're waiting for this one to get uh, unholted. This one, I, I believe it got halted around like 954. Let's check this out. Nine, 953 got halted. Okay. So if it's a five minute hold, guys, if it's a five minute hold, it's getting unholted within the next minute. Hold time is 953.24. Thank you, AK. Appreciate it, buddy. So it should be unholted in nine seconds if it's a five minute or if it's a five minute hold, we're going we're going in about five seconds here. All right, I think we're still on a ten minute then. Still on a ten minute. Yep, is that Marky? You're saying a little bit more of the meat was down here towards the second one. Yep, again, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I, I know I'm trying to, I'm kind of like bashing it a little bit because I'm saying, you know, the word potential, right? But I, there's a big difference. There's just, again, there's a big difference between announces publication of preclinical data in its journal, right? And a difference between like KRTX, which says, you know, KRTX, we have met primary endpoints with patients right here with schizophrenia. It's a lot different than MYOV, where MYOV, again, comes out with the press release that says, we have announced 97% response rate in positive phase three trials. It's a lot different than EYEG that says, EYEG, we have met primary endpoints. You know, these are a lot, you know, better. ASLN right here, says, you know, we're announcing a, pub, a publication of our preclinical pre data in its journal. You know, that's not, this isn't even new data to us, you know, towards uh, towards a lot of traders. This is just saying that they, they're getting their data up in a, a publication. They're publicizing it into a journal. So I'm not, again, I'm not disagreeing that ASLN's not profitable. I'm not disagreeing that this is a, a, you know, a bad play. I'm saying, again, it's extremely profitable. I just want you guys to be careful on it if you guys are too late on it. That's all I'm saying. But as long as there's momentum, hey, this market's hot. Traders are, again, going to keep playing it. Yep. 
Yeah, it all comes down to the mob. There they go. Yeah, high risk, high reward. Exactly. All right, so that means we're going to have to wait about three more minutes until we get unholted here. About three more minutes until we get unholted. You can see what's going to be coming on up on these plays. Also, sign out EYEG still trying to hold. EYEG, not really the best looking one in the world. And right, let's switch back to our two minute time frame right here. Again, ASL line, if you're saying why are there bids higher than the ask, well, that's just because it's halted. When a stock's halted, that's just what it does. It'll draw, and when, you know, when the market's live, it won't do that. That's, it only happens when it's halted. It's also a sign that shows that the stock's halted. Whenever you see bids higher than the ask, it just, again, kind of just lets you know that the stock's halted. So just, again, whenever you see that, it just usually means the stock is halted. So ISLM will give it another minute or so. EYG actually starting to get a little bit weaker. And DGS, little attempted little pump and dump right there. ISLM's number one. EYG trying to hold on up, getting a little bit uglier. All right, so it's really EYG and ASLN. ASLN's the mob play right now. And I know some of you mid-cap guys were looking at LK before, which is nice. So I know some of you mid-cap guys were looking at LK before. Rapid looking over on CLVS. CLVS, this has just been pretty solid for a slow and steady swing for like the past two weeks now. This has gone from around $5 all the way towards around $8.30 in about two weeks. So, you know, it's moved about $3 over the past two weeks, which is kind of just a slow and steady play. Honestly, as long as it holds that, uh, that uh, 13 EMA, it's still considered on the bullish side. As long as it holds that 13 EMA. ASLN is back. ASLN is back. Gap up to 170-ish. 175 holding up as a little bit of resistance. Stock again. Ooh, stock's still going. Stock is still going. Watch for another halt. Watch for another halt. Another halt right here. Another halt right here on ASLN. All the way up to 189. AK-47, you're up $1,000 and still in on ASLN. Woo! Here we go. Here we go. So ASLN, we are still going. Another halt. Most likely going to be another 10-minute halt, though. So this is this is just you know pushing right now. This is just still pushing over on ASLN. Just all momentum based. All momentum based. As long as traders want it, it's going to keep on going. So most likely we're going to have another 10-minute hole. I ho ho hopefully we can start getting some five-minute holds. You know, so hopefully we can start getting some five-minute holds here. Um, is... Yeah, is ASLN getting halted on volume? Yes. So again, why is it getting halted? There's just a lot more buyers than there are sellers. So imagine if 100 people try to buy a stock all at the same time, but there's only 10 people selling the stock. What would happen? All these orders go through that you know that are buying, right? 
And then what happens, though? There's nowhere for them to go. So the level two gets frozen. Sellers, again, are, you know, adding to their shares now. And that's why the stock has a gap up. Because, you know, market makers have to say, okay, we have all these people willing to buy, but no one is, again, willing to sell. So we have to basically move the stock up to match where sellers are. And that's why you have gap ups on plays because you have still all these buyers and all, all the Holt is, is these market makers, you know, basically matching people buying with sellers right now. And that's why the stock has a gap up. Again, good job if you guys are in, but as I stress, you know, just as long as it's holding on up, you guys are good. After every Holt, I would take, you know, take something. After every single Holt, I would take some sort of profit. This is awesome. We're seeing this nice move, a nice trip on a Friday. It's awesome that we have this climb. But the thing is, let's be smart here as well. The stock is up 329%. Okay? It's not going to go up forever. I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer. I'm trying to be realistic. Lock in some profit as, again, the stock climbs. If you're saying, Deck, can I hop in the stock now? Well, I mean, we're going pretty straight up at this time. The stock's going to open up most likely around 360%. You know, and if you hop in now, again, it's high risk, high reward. So it's high risk, high reward if you hop in now. William just made $1,100 in profit. Okay, buddy. All right. Just show me up, huh? <laughs> Good job, William. So, yeah, so this has blasted through. This has blasted through um, the 50-day moving average. Next target is going to be 2, it looks like 2, 240-ish. Next target, I'm just looking at some old highs. Um, you know, candle high right here, upper shadow high right here, and also a little consolidation back here. Uh, so I'm saying, you know, ASLN, ASLN 240, next target. So, again, good job. So ASLN 240 next target. Keep it up, team. You can, if you are in on this play, you can look for a you know a limit sell. Um, it's going to be tough because if you don't get filled, you know you're most likely going to get stuck in a hold. Uh, there is going to be probably like bigger spreads, but the safest thing, the safest thing to do to guarantee your profits is just you know market order out you know after the hold. That would be the safest thing to do. But if you want to, you can put a limit order up high, and then hopefully you get hit on it. Matt's guy, I'm in at 189. Would you say 240 would be a good selling target? Yeah, well, that would be the goal. That doesn't mean we're going to get there. You know, you're probably going to gap up towards around like 220, it looks like. So it looks like you're going to gap up from 220. If you're in at 189, right after the gap up, I would lock in half my profits with maybe a small market order or something. So that's probably what I would do at least. And then what should you do next then? Well, hold the rest of the half out. You already locked in profits up high. Make your stop loss basically where you entered or possibly just $2. So I always say, guys, what's the best strategy in trading? The best strategy in trading is one that's impossible for you to lose on. Right? Let's just give this one. Let's see. All right, we're back on ASLN. ASLN's back right now. ASLN trying to hold $2. Trying to hold $2 right now. We'll see if we can break through $2. Right now, trying to get a little bit move. All right, here we go. Getting a little bit more hype. No, $2 is having a little bit of trouble, though. $2 is a little bit of a trouble. We're, we're going to get halted on selling. We're halted on selling now. So we are halted on selling volume now. So there's the pullback. So we are halted on selling volume now. Stock had its upper shadow, right? Starting to come back down. So now we had more sellers than buyers. And now the stock got halted because that way. But again, what's the perfect trading strategy? The perfect tra trading strategy is what, right? If the stock again is moving on up, stock is climbing, right? And let's say you hop in, okay? So let's say you hop in right here. This is your entry. Right, and you get in with 1,000 shares, right? 1K shares right here, right? Now what happens? The stock keeps moving on up, keeps moving on up, keeps moving on up. What should you do? Well, now what you should do is lock out 500 of these shares up top. 
right? So you lock out 500 shares. How many shares do you have left? You still have 500 shares left. But the thing is, you already locked in profit. So let's say this stock just went on, you know, a nice move. And let's say you just made, um, let's say you just made $250 on this move right here. Well, now what can you do? Now let's move our stop loss up because maybe we had a stop loss right here, right? Now let's move the stop loss to maybe right here, right? Or maybe right here, or we can actually just move our stop loss over to our entry, right? But the thing is, now that we locked in this 250 bucks, it is impossible for us to ever lose money, right? And how is it impossible for us to ever lose money? Well, we move our stop loss up from where we started so even worst case scenario, if we lock in at the top and the stock starts falling and this is our stop loss right here, well, then guess what? Now, again, I'm just going to be locking in somewhere around, you know, $160 on this last 250 shares, right? I have $160 I just made. We're coming out. Zero. Carry the one. You get it over there. $410. So I just made $410 because I move my stop loss up or I get out before my entry after taking half my profits. So after you take half your profits, just let the other half run out. And as long as it stays above your entry, it's impossible for you to lose. And when it comes to your entry, just get out and you break even and you already locked up money up high, right? So, you know, that's what you guys should always be, you know, looking at, you know, for these plays.